Hello everyone. I hope uh, you're all doing well. Um, in this uh, concept talk, uh, we will be looking at uh, the inter introduction to the kinematics of a particle. Okay, to so kinematics of a particle. Uh, we have uh, gone over the fact that uh, in kinematics, we will, we will be looking at the motion of particles or rigid bodies without worrying about the forces acting on them. And then uh, we are now focusing our attention on particles, which are entities that do not have any geometric dimension, but they have an associated mass. Okay. Uh, in the kinematics of uh, particles, uh, we, will, we will be involved in uh, looking at uh, four uh, terms of interest. Okay, so these are the position vector, then we will look at the displacement vector, then we shall look at the velocity vector, and lastly we shall look at the acceleration vector. And uh, you already come across uh, the term vector in uh, statics. It's a quantity that has both a magnitude and a direction. Okay. So let's start with the position vector. Okay. Uh, so let me club position and displacement vectors together because they go hand in hand. Okay, so I'm going to talk about position vectors and displacement vector. Okay, all right. In uh, doing so, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to consider a particle traveling along an arbitrary path. Okay, so here is a particle traveling along an arbitrary path. So this is the path of the uh, particle. So I'm going to mention that this is an arbitrary, arbitrary path. And uh, the particle is, uh, you know, starting here, perhaps uh, this is the direction of uh, travel for the particle. And uh, maybe at some point in time, the particle is uh, sitting here. So I'm going to call that as uh, particles position P at some point in time T. Then maybe after a finite time has elapsed, the particle is probably somewhere here. And I'm going to say this is uh, particle P at a time T plus delta T. Okay, now the motion of this particle is observed by a fixed observer or a person who's called as a stationary observer. Okay, so I'm going to draw that observer right here. It's a, you can consider yourself as a stationary observer as you're sitting on your chair and uh, you're looking at the motion of maybe cars out on the street. Okay, so this is a stationary observer. Let me call the observer as O. Okay, so this is a stationary observer or you can say it's a stationary coordinate frame or in more fancier terms it's called as an inertial coordinate frame okay now uh, position vector of uh, the particle at time t is nothing but a vector that specifies okay where is the particle at that point in time okay specifies the location of the particle at that time okay and uh, in this uh, situation uh, so maybe before I start drawing things on it, a position vector allows us to locate the particle's position at some point in time. Okay, so allows us to locate the position of the particle at some time let's say t as seen by an observer now mind you i could also have a moving observer or what is uh, termed as a non-inertial frame of reference uh, we are not going to do that right now, but we will be doing it when we hit upon uh, uh, relative motion between rigid bodies and so on. Okay, all right. Uh, so position vector typically is denoted by the letter a little r, and uh, I'm going to draw a straight line here. So this is uh, r at some point in time t. Okay, this is the position vector at some point in time t, and then this will then be the position vector at some point in time t plus delta t. 
which means that this is going to be r at t plus delta t okay so this position vector is typically uh, labeled as uh, r of t so this is r of t r of t plus delta t etc depending on where you are in time displacement vector is nothing but the vector difference between the position vectors at time t and delta t okay so if i now draw a vector that is joining these two points together okay and uh, that is going to be pointing from due to the vector law of addition it will be pointing from p of t to p of t plus dt and uh, that creature is going to be called as delta r okay so that is displacement vector and uh, we shall specify that here so displacement vector is the vector difference between the position vectors as you can see here r of t plus delta r gives me r of t plus delta t okay so displacement vector is a delta r of t is uh, going to be r of t um, or r of t plus delta t minus r of t okay now we can take these uh, displacement vectors and then we can also take this finite time interval delta t so delta t here is a finite time interval okay finite time interval okay p of t is the position of the particle at time t p of t plus delta t is the position of the particle at time t plus delta t taking delta r and delta t if i divide one by the other then i get what is called as the average velocity vector okay so now let's go to the velocity vectors okay so i say velocity vectors because there are two of them okay only one that is of uh, uh, a bigger consequence to us okay so average velocity vector okay average velocity vector is called as the rate of change of the displacement vector over a finite time interval okay so this is uh, labeled as uh, v average and uh, this is given as delta r divided by delta t and uh, this is the rate of change of the displacement vector delta r over a finite time interval delta t okay but i'm not really interested in average quantities i want to know what is happening right now okay and how do i do that i do that by defining what is called as an instantaneous velocity vector okay that's an interesting creature instantaneous velocity vector and uh, this is typically denoted as uh, v of t okay how do we define the instantaneous velocity vector and for this i revisit the path of the particle from before so i'm just going to copy the figure from uh, before uh, i'm going to probably get rid of uh, uh, some of these uh, quantities okay uh, so i'm going to copy this and i'm going to bring it down here okay and uh, while i'm doing that i'm going to get rid of uh, some of these uh, things here i'm going to cut that off i'm going to cut that off as well I'm not interested in any of those things okay all right and uh, probably not interested in this either okay now uh, the particle is traveling along this arbitrary path i already know that okay p of t is the position vector of the particle at time t right now i say okay instead of looking at a finite time interval i'm going to look at an infinitesimal time interval dt okay or a very 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 tiny time interval dt so infinitesimal time I'm sorry I usually get tripped up writing infinitesimal. 
infinitesimal time interval which I'm going to call as dt and I'm going to underline this because this is an important term okay so within an infinitesimal time interval dt let us assume that the particle has gone from p of t to some position p of t plus dt right then I can draw another position vector starting from the stationary observers perspective all the way down to there okay this is going to be r of t plus dt and then using the same idea as before I can still define a displacement vector but this displacement vector is now going to be an infinitesimal displacement vector because it is between two very 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 close points in time okay so that's going to be my displacement vector here which I'm going to now call as dr okay so this is going to be dr which is still a vector okay so here now dr is an infinitesimal displacement vector and if I have now defined these quantities I can say that the instantaneous velocity vector is nothing but the average velocity vector considered over an infinitesimal period of time or it's essentially the infinitesimal displacement divided by the infinitesimal time interval dt or the rate of change of the infinitesimal displacement vector however you want to look at it okay so the instantaneous velocity vector now v of t is now going to be defined as the following it's the limit of the average velocity as this average velocity becomes very very small and uh, this essentially lets us define it as the rate of change of the infinitesimal displacement vector okay so this is the uh, rate of change of the infinitesimal displacement vector right and uh, two things that I want to mention here now I can look at the distance from point uh, P of T to point P of T plus DT okay this distance I'm going to call as uh, a length DS okay so that's a distance that I'm measuring here okay this is the length DS which is nothing but the magnitude of the infinitesimal displacement vector okay so ds as you have seen there is the magnitude of dr which means that magnitude dr is equal to ds and you know that any vector is the magnitude of the vector times its unit vector along its direction right that's a foundational uh, principle any vector is its magnitude times the unit vector along its direction right so which means that the velocity vector instantaneous velocity vector v of t can be given as the magnitude of the displacement vector multiplied by e suffix t new quantity now what is e suffix t e suffix t is the direction of dr you see right because uh, instantaneous velocity is dr by dt which means that uh, what is the vector quantity here it's dr dt is not a vector quantity it's a finite time interval right which means that the direction of the velocity vector has to be the same as the direction of the infinitesimal displacement vector so this essentially tells us that the direction of v of t has to be the same as the direction of 
dr. And if I say that ET is the direction of dr, and this is actually called as the unit vector tangent to the path at that point in time, okay? Unit vector tangent to the path. And why is it tangent to the path? And it's fairly straightforward to see. If I just come back to my figure here, you see the dr is very, very small, which means that as time dt becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, this p of t plus dt is essentially going to start coming and getting collapsed into the point p of t itself, right? Which means that the direction of dr is going to be tangential to the path at that point in time. And I'm going to draw this uh, using the... Uh, green arrow so I'm going to say that okay this is the tangent vector okay this is a unit vector of course um, let me pull that out and say okay this is uh, e of t and uh, e of t is a unit vector which is uh, tangent to the path to the path at time t. Okay, this is a very, very important idea. And I want to make sure that this is uh, like tangent to the path. Okay, so that's the situation right there. Make sure that these are also aligned well. <laughs> uh, so this is the direction of the tangential uh, unit vector. Okay. And uh, so the direction of the velocity vector is tangent to the path at any given point in time. Okay, that is an important, important, important statement. What is the direction of the velocity vector? The direction of the velocity vector is the same as the direction of the displacement vector. What is the direction of the displacement vector? The infinitesimal displacement vector as time shrinks to zero will eventually have the direction that is tangent to the path at that point in time. Okay, which means the direction of the velocity vector is also tangent to the path. Okay, so that's something I want to write down here. Okay, so as time dt tends to zero, the direction of dr will become tangent to the path. That is, it will point in the direction labeled as E suffix T. E suffix T is a unit vector, okay? Something that I want to underline here. It's a unit vector that is tangent to the path, okay? Which means that the direction of the velocity vector When I say velocity vector, I mean the instantaneous velocity vector. Is always tangent to the path of the particle at that time. And uh, just for reference, you know, if I draw a particle having an arbitrary path and let's say that, okay, particle is traveling from this direction to that direction, then at any point in time, you know, if these are the positions of the particle, then the direction of the velocity vector is going to be tangent to the path, okay? So at this point, it's going to be tangent to the path this way. Then at that point, it's going to be tangent to the path this way. Okay, then at this point in time, it's going to be tangent to the path in the following manner, right? And so on and so forth. Okay, so this is the direction of the velocity vector at different points in time. Okay, and it's always tangential to the path. Then lastly, we come to the acceleration vector. Okay, so... This is a fairly straightforward quantity. Acceleration vector is nothing but the rate of change of the velocity vector, okay? So this is gonna be called as little a, okay? And uh, this is the 
this is an instantaneous acceleration vector of course this is the rate of change of the instantaneous velocity vector which implies that a is dv by dt okay and uh, to summarize uh, the relationships that we essentially have are the following we have uh, uh, velocity v as uh, dr by dt and uh, acceleration a as dv by dt these are the velocity and acceleration vectors we can also define a quantity which is called as the speed which is nothing but the magnitude of the instantaneous velocity vector which is nothing but the magnitude of the displacement vector divided by the infinitesimal time delta t or dt <coughs> and uh, if i go back to my figure here you will see that the magnitude of the displacement vector is ds right which means that velocity v or speed v is uh, going to be ds by dt which means that the acceleration vector can also be written in terms of uh, the magnitude of the uh, velocity uh, vector okay so uh, we can say that the magnitude of the acceleration vector which is the following can be written as dv by dt but we have to be careful this is only under certain conditions okay <clears throat> and uh, this is typically only for particles that travel along a straight line path okay this is for particles that travel along a straight line only okay that's a huge caveat all right uh, thank you very much and i'll see you in the next concept talk bye bye